and it's like you said too. He had so many issues over the years with with alcohol and with with pills and yeah. stuff. And he, you know, I was in the dressing room when when they carted him out and took him straight to rehab in right. Minneapolis when right. he fell asleep. Right. Finally, he had gotten over that. At least as far as as I knew. I mean, I don't know. He was. Oh, you yeah. know, it seemed like he was pretty legit, clean, and, and sober. Four, four years sober, bro. Four years sober. When he died. Yeah. And then he, he passed away from yeah. enlarged heart. Yeah, enlarged heart, heart. Heart failure at 38 years old. Do you think that's because of all the, the, the drugs that caught up to Absolutely. him? Absolutely. They say, you know, because of the... You've seen it time and time again. In this business, the worst drugs, and I don't care what they are, it's not, you know, steroids. It's not alcohol. It's not cocaine. It's not marijuana. The worst things are the pills. Mm-hmm. You've seen... Everybody that we know that have died yeah. has been from those pills. That's true, yeah. They, you know, and... You know, it's it's a quick release. We're, we're we're hurt. It's easy for us to you know. It's easy to us to justify using that because you re- if anybody needs them, you know, we need them. We yeah. need a Viking in. We need this. But then it's so easy to start abusing that stuff, and that's where you know that was Eddie's vice. So you know, he fought every day to stay off those. You know, he really did. But they say with you know Vicodins and somas and all that stuff was that it gives a lot of scar tissue on your heart. Mm because you abuse him so much and we've seen it with Umaga and so many different people who died from heart failure and heart troubles and because of yeah. those pills, yeah. you know? So, um, that's kind of what happened to him, you know? And, and the story really, he and I were, I didn't, we, we were flying to Minneapolis. We were all home. This is the first day of the tour and we were going to Europe. Was it a pay per view? In it was no. It, it was a a dual show, like a SmackDown and Raw. Oh, because you're going to Europe. Yeah, yeah, doing both shows in Minneapolis, and then we're going to go straight to Europe. So uh, everybody was there. So um, I get on the plane. He Eddie had already moved had already moved to Phoenix. Mm-hmm. So I get on the plane, and uh, I'm in coach, and he's you know in first class. Well, I, I, I get on and I'm a coach. The door's getting ready to close. And I see Eddie, you know, he was always the last one. He was on Mexican time, always, you know. And I say Sh- that. Shoulders, shoulders slumped. Yeah, yeah. And I say that with all, you know, due yeah, respect. Yeah, of course. Everybody knows yeah, Mexican, Mexican time, time. what Mexican time is. Yeah. <laughs> so he runs on the plane, and the, I mean, right before the door's closed. And he gets on, and I go, hey. And he goes, hey, what's up, man? I didn't know you were going to be on this plane. So he gives up his first class seat and comes back with me. So mm-hmm. we hung out and stayed together. It was like just a treat, you know, it really was to sit mm-hmm. next to each other. And we were on different shows at the time, so we didn't see each other all that much. Right. So we sat next to each other and we were watching a movie, you know, and um, he looks at me and, and he's talking and stuff and he kind of he kind of nods off as he's talking to me. I say, oh, man, he's really tired, you know. And then he kind of wakes up and like, oh, hey, you know, and kind of goes, we went up watching a movie together and we get to Minneapolis. I didn't think anything of it. We get to Minneapolis and um, um, we go to check in at one of the, like the, the Marriott. Yeah, the, know, one right the, by the one by the airport. by the Target Center. The one by the Target Center. Oh, okay. That everybody was staying at. So we go there and, you know, and it's like, hey, man, we used to room together, you know, all the time. And we decide, hey, you know, we'll just get our own rooms. Okay, no problem. So we're checking in and... Um, as we're as we're there, we see Michael Hayes. Michael Hayes comes up to us, and uh, he's he's not Michael Hayes anymore. He's Freebird. Mm. He's a Freebird. He's been drinking yeah. and hanging out. You he's know, the beer wolf. Yeah, yeah. And he, <laughs> and he kind of um, mad dogs Eddie. You know, and I didn't really notice it, but you know, Eddie, what do you mean uh, mad, dog? mad dogs? He kind of stared him down. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Stared him down, but uh, you know, I didn't really notice it. And Eddie didn't. Eddie f- after um, um, Michael leaves, goes back to the bar. Eddie stops and looks at me. and Goes, did you see what that? Mofo did. So what do you mean? Yeah, he he's staring at me. I'm like, like staring at you, staring at you. Like, he's like, yeah. He, Eddie's pissed. And I said, all right. What do you want to do? You gonna go beat him up? Because we were just, you know, if he's gonna get a fight, I'm gonna get in a fight, and right. vice versa. Right. So he's like, nah, we'll give him a pass. I said, okay. So we get, literally gave him a pass. So the night before Eddie died, really, I mean, Michael Hayes didn't know how close he was to getting beat up. Hmm. I'm not literally. We were gonna go in there and drag him out, beat him up. So um, we said, okay, hey man, well let's um. Why don't we, you know, go work out in the morning? And just as we got there, we see Chris Benoit, mm-hmm. and and Benoit goes, "Hey man, what's up, guys? Hey, we're going to bed, but we're going to train, eight a.m. Let's meet down for 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 breakfast, eight a.m. We'll go train before the show. And we always did, and uh, then we're going to go to Target Center. Okay, great, no problem. So uh, I go to my room, Eddie goes to his room. Well, then I get a call from Eddie, on my cell phone. He says, "Hey man, can can I talk to you?" And I say, "Yeah, what's going on, man?" And he goes, "I." I I just really got, I got to talk to you. I said, okay, hold on. Let me run downstairs real quick. You know, let me, let me take care of some stuff downstairs. I don't know if I was, you know, getting an extra key or whatever I was doing. So I went downstairs and then, uh, I call Eddie to his room, you know, five, eight minutes later. And I go, Hey man, uh, you want to talk? And he goes, nah, I'm okay. 
I'm cool. Mm. And I said, are you sure? Let's talk. And he goes, nah, I, I'm, I'm cool, man. I'm okay. I'm, like, I'm bro. I'm here. He's like, no, nah, I'm good. I'm good. I said, all right, man. Well, I'll see you in the morning. We'll go work out. Okay, cool. No problem. You know, I think I had a beer. Then I uh, went to bed. I was going to wake up and go work out. At 7 a.m., I got a, um, a call from one of the security guards in the hotel. He says, Chavo. Yeah, hey, this is security in, in the hotel. I'm like, all right. Why are you calling me? He goes, well, your, your uncle is, um, I, guess, I don't know how he knew we were there, or I was there. He wasn't there last that night. I guess mm -hmm. the word got around, whatever. And he goes, um, your uncle's passed out. I said, passed out? He goes, yeah, he's passed out in the bathroom. And I'm thinking, the bathroom? Did and We had just talked on the plane that Eddie was sober for four years. Mm -hmm. So I was like, passed out? Did he have a relapse? Oh, no. Come on. Really? But also, how would the guy know it's 7 in the morning? I right? was like, how? so he's passed out in the bathroom. I'm thinking he's passed out in the bathroom like in, in the like, lobby in the or, lobby yeah. or something like that. So I go, okay, I'll be right down. And the, the, the security guard goes, no, I'll come up to your room. So he comes up to my room. And he comes and gets me. I'm still half out of it, you know. And we got in late last the mm -hmm. night before. So I'm coming down. And he takes me to Eddie's room. I said, what, is he, what, what do you mean his room? So I guess he explained to me that he had missed, Eddie had missed a couple wake-up calls. Wake-up calls, yeah. So they went to knock on his door. And the latch was on his door. Mm -hmm. well, they had, so whenever that happens, they're, they're you know, knocking, knocking, knocking. No answer, no answer, no answer. They cut the latch off. Mm. So as I open up, the latch is already cut off. And I, and I walk in, and I see Eddie face down in the bathroom. Mm -hmm. He's face down. I mean, just like, and I, I looked at him kind of like, still thinking, well, wait a minute. I'm still coming to my senses. And I'd seen Eddie passed out from, you know, drinking or pills or whatever it was, you know, 20 times in my life. Right. But of course, this was years and years before. Mm -hmm. So when I looked at him, I'm like, anybody else? I mean, if I would have seen, you know, just any random person, I'd be like, well, you're passed out. What the heck? You know, let me get him up. So I... I see Eddie's down. I'm like, okay, let me assess the situation. What's going on? So I, f I put my hand by his, uh, by his nose and there's no breath, you know, but mm -hmm. I hear a couple gurgling noises. And then um, I go, this isn't right. I still feel, I'm feeling him. He's warm. Hmm. You know, he's warm. He's not like, I'm like, okay, this isn't right. Let's pull him out. So I talked to the security guard, security guard and we pull him out and turn him around. And so as soon as I see his face, we turn around, I said, like I start panicking, you know, okay, this really isn't right. Call 911 now. And so they're calling, you know, 911 and we're giving them, you know, uh, mouth to mouth CPR, CPR yeah. and, and, you know, I'm, I'm freaking out. I'm, I'm yelling at him going, Eddie, stay with me, stay with me. Come on, Eddie's come on. Basically, Do you think he was still alive? He was still alive because wow. he was warm. Wow. And then uh, I saw him go from warm to cold. He died right there. Wow. Right there. And, you know, they called 911, the, you know, ambulance came and, you know, they're giving CPR and everything their way, you know, and they're just like, mm, he was, he's gone. And, oh and I was like, what if I would have got here, you know, yeah, an hour yeah, before? Yeah. And usually we room together. Mm -hmm. We didn't room together. And um, they're like, no, they said he had, you know, something already. He would have been gone no matter what. I'm like, like, like what? Mm -hmm. So now I'm sitting here with my brother dying basically in my arms mm -hmm. going, uh, I was in shock. I was like in shock. And then I had to go back to my room and, and call people. I'm like, w I didn't know who to call. Who, who did you call? I'm like, who do, who do I call? I think I called home. I'm freaking out. I'm like, oh my God. So I called Fit Finley. Like, Why Fit and not Dean or Chris? Well, I didn't want to wake up Chris. Fit was an agent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I right. wanted him to get the word right. to, you know, what's going on, to Vince and everybody. I didn't, I don't have Vince's yeah. cell phone, you know. I'm not like you. I wasn't the champ. <laughs> <laughs> So he goes around and makes some, you know, I guess some calls and all of a sudden I'm in my hotel room just sitting on the bed like, like what the heck just happened? Mm -hmm. And then I get a call from, from Chris Benoit goes, hey, where are you? I'm downstairs. We're supposed mm -hmm. to meet at 8 o'clock to go work out and, and eat breakfast. And I'm like, Chris, sit down. Are you sitting down? He goes, yeah. So I told Chris and Chris was like, I never heard somebody wail like yeah. that. Like this deep, deep yeah. moan. Like, oh, like I just... just you know, mm -hmm. punched him in the stomach and, and mm -hmm. stole his soul. Mm. That's what it felt like, you know. And I was like, and he was, he was yelling and screaming and just deep, 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 deep. Whoa, no, 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 no. You know. So, and then from there, I mean, I had to go back to the room, and then Vince McMahon and Triple H, Shawn Michaels came over, and you know, Vince is asking, "What do I do?" 
do we go on with the show? And I was like, absolutely, you go on with the show. Mm-hmm. You don't cancel the show. Mm-hmm. I was like, um, yeah, you you go on with the show. I go, that's what Eddie would have wanted to do. He wouldn't want the, everybody here. And, and Eddie knew, we were always taught that you always have to you know, give the people their money's worth, mm-hmm. no matter what. They're they're there to see you in this, you know, this economy. They don't have a lot of money, and they're choosing to spend it on you. It's your obligation to give them their money's worth. Yeah. It really, really is. So I looked at Vince. I said, "Yeah, if you would, you cancel the show, then he he'd be pissed. That's not what he he wanted." Mm-hmm. So they went ahead and made a tribute show to Eddie. You know, and I mean, completely rewritten. You know, totally yeah. different. But then. Uh, you know that we had to deal with all that stuff and go to. Did you have to go to Europe, or were you able to? No, do the no. I don't so, so I went. So I went. Yeah. You know, went, we did that show. They said, "Of course, Chavo, we don't. You, you can go home." I said, "No, I want to wrestle." Mm-hmm. I was able to wrestle JBL. You know, and and just another good friend of Eddie. Yeah, yeah. And that was just a great, great moment. But that night, who stayed behind from the, from the tour was just was me, Chris Benoit, Ray Mysterio, and Dean Malenko. Mm-hmm. They let us all stay behind and, and take care of some stuff. Everybody flew out that night. We went back to the hotel and we're like, oh, let's get something to eat. So we're eating. It's a very somber moment. And um, Zach Wilde showed mm, up. That's right. So Zach comes up to us. Zach Wilde, you know, guitarist for Ozzy Osbourne and Black Label Society and good friend of yours. And I'd never met him. And he goes, hey, what's up, guys? I just want to say, hey, I'm, 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 you know, I'm Zach. I'm a friend of uh, Chris Jericho's mm-hmm. and Steve Austin's. And, blah, 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 and, and, and I'm not putting two and two together. I'm like, hey, man, what's up? How you doing? And we didn't necessarily blow him off but we weren't very receptive yeah so then he went back to the bar and did his own thing and then um the next time i saw zach i so i came up to him, go man hey man i just want to apologize when i met you that first time this eddie had just passed that night and we were dealing with it he's like we didn't know until we got back to the bus whatever and, and the word went around yeah. and we're like he was like oh don't even worry about it no wonder you guys didn't yeah, you know yeah, were, yeah. were just kind of standoffish you know yeah yeah absolutely 